you can get a GS-14 government job in under 100 days. And if you don't know what that is, GS-14 is a pay ban in the federal government that can go all the way up to $170,000 a year. I worked with a guy in the military whose occupation was artillery. You wouldn't think there are many transferable skills with launching explosives into the sky, but like many jobs and careers, you can leverage your past experience. Just because this guy was in the military, it doesn't mean he was always focused on combat operations. He did administrative work. He did analytical work. He was involved when it comes to communication, when it comes to team building, problem solving. You can find experience in there that's relevant to a lot of civilian jobs. I took a look at his resume and it was weak. And just like many people, his resume was not specific enough. It didn't convey the right information. It said, I managed this operation, but so what? Who cares about that? We need to get into the detail. What was involved in that operation? What did it result in? The results were missing. Your achievements need to be result oriented and quantified, meaning put a number on it. You just didn't manage employees. It was more than two. It was 30, 35. I don't know what it was, but put the number in there. The number needs to go in there so that human resources can give you full credit for the achievement. You can take just about anybody's experience at the surface level. They're not qualified for much. I don't care if they have 30 or 40 years at a company in an industry. If you just write it at a very surface level, what are they qualified for? GS7, GS9, maybe. But then you dig deeper. You dig to about two, three levels deeper and you find out what this person actually did, what their experience is actually in. They didn't just plan this operation or, or they weren't responsible for a certain process. What they did is they reduced the processing time. They increased the productivity. They ensured that the compliance rate was at 100%. That's what they did. That's what we need to hear. The next is the job series. If you have an amazing resume, but you're applying to the wrong job series, it doesn't matter. You're not referred, you don't get the interview, you definitely do not get the job. So I could be an expert program manager, but I'm applying to an instructor position. The instructor position wants to see in my resume that I taught, that I instructed people. They wanna see that I designed curriculum. They don't care too much about the programs that I've managed if it has nothing to do with the instructor job announcement. Now, in his case, we went to the 0301 job series. He had a strong resume, he had the right job series, but the next part, I couldn't help him with. I couldn't do it for him. And that is applying every single day. No matter how bad I want you to get the job, I can't apply for you. You have to find it within yourself to apply three or four times a day. And you need to adapt the mentality and the mindset of, I'm gonna apply and then I'm gonna forget about it. I'm gonna apply and then I'm gonna forget about it. Get it out of my face, don't think about it. Do not get too emotionally invested in one job and think about it before you go to sleep at night. And when you wake up and when you're eating lunch, like, oh, wouldn't it be great? It's the Department of Agriculture and I would be the senior executive. That's the dream. When you start to get in la la land, when you start daydreaming like that, what, you're wasting time, right? Because you could be setting yourself up for disappointment. But more importantly, with that time, you could be applying more. You could be improving your resume more. You could be doing online courses, online classes to make yourself a more competitive candidate. If you're trying to get a federal government job and you want me to email you directly virtual hiring events that are occurring across multiple federal agencies, I will do that on a weekly basis if you sign up to my free newsletter down below. Okay, so this guy applied 45 times. He was referred 29 times and he went on three interviews, which resulted in two tentative job offers. And 97 days after his first application, he accepted a final job offer with the Department of Veteran Affairs as a program manager. Now, when you're applying like this, I recommend you do some tracking. You can do it on Microsoft Excel, or you can even look at Notion. This is an example on how a tracking system in Notion can look like. You want to track because you might not be getting enough referrals. And I recommend that everyone should at least get 50% referral. That should be your rate. So if you're applying to 10 jobs, eventually five of those jobs should come back as a referral. If that, if that falls below 50%, I would strongly suggest you revise your resume, 
Look at your resume, adjust it. Another thing that could be holding you back is you're not altering, you're not tailoring your resume directly to the job announcement. So you have to look at the specialized experience section and make sure those same words are being weaved throughout your resume. Another thing that he did is to make sure to accept all job offers. So when you're applying, typically you will have a range of GS grades. In his case, he was applying for GS 13, 14, and 15. Now, the first tentative job offer that came in was actually a GS 13, and he accepted that. But then after a couple more weeks, a 14 job offer came in. So even though he accepted the 13, it's not a problem. You know, he rejected it before he even started and he accepted the 14 position. So you should always be open to accept whatever job offer comes in. And it doesn't even matter if it's tentative job offer or final job offer, accept them all. Because you don't know how fast each federal agency moves when it comes to the onboarding process. Maybe you need that first paycheck a lot quicker so you're willing to go with a certain department before another department. Or in his case, there was a higher GS grade being offered so obviously he wanted to take that. There's always this concern and questions about Will HR be mad at me? Will I be burning bridges? Will I be blacklisted? And the answer is no. The human resource office, they deal with this every single day. People are chasing after what is in their best interest. So there's no hard feelings. No one's gonna take it personally. Look after your own interests. I understand there's a large degree of uncertainty when you're changing careers. And it's not just with the military, it's also with the private sector. Maybe you're changing industries and you feel uncertain. And I understand that. But once you have a plan, a proven plan, you need to commit yourself to that plan. You need to follow through with it and be consistent because consistency is like a superpower. If you keep doing the same thing over and over again, it's going to compound. And in this circumstance, it's going to result in multiple job offers. And then you pick whatever agency or whatever GS grade that interests you the most. Do not fall into the trap of losing belief, losing faith, and then you start making excuses. And then you start you know, looking externally and saying, well, I'm not a veteran or, you know, they only hire people that they know or the system is broken. I mean, you start doing that. You start, you know, point finger pointing at everything that's wrong, but you don't look at yourself. So look at yourself first. If you're still interested in the federal government job, I did a live stream recently, answered over a dozen questions about the federal hiring process. If you're interested in that, then I want you to watch this video next. If you would like to see more videos like this, please click like and the subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.